Errands. From the moment you woke up, you knew that today was going to be busier than usual. There was a small, there was a list of errands that needed to be finished before the day was done. Hmm. This is a fun market. First was visiting one of the biggest farmers markets in the area. It was only opened two weeks a month during certain parts of the year. It was rare that you and your family were able to attend, so your moms liked to make the most out of every minute. And you realized it was not just them feeling that way when you heard a whistle from your left side. Wow, this is a swanky show. Vegetables have never seemed so highbrow. Seriously, they don't mess around with their products. Isn't that great? Isn't it exciting? Liz crossed her arms. You could tell she was amused. <laughs> we couldn't have picked a more perfect trip. It's been so long since we've had a true family outing. <laughs> <clears throat> her teasing tone said it more than she actually did. Your next-door neighbors had joined you this day, and that's what made it a true family outing. The three parents laughed approvingly. Out of the corner of your eye, you caught Cove looking at you sympathetically. Some things never changed, and some jokes never died. You'd long accepted that. You're excited to check things out. You thought this trip might be fun. You shrugged, feeling indifferent. You felt uncomfortable. You were in a bad mood. This trip was a waste of your time. Uh, social anxiety. There was so much ground to cover today, you wanted to get a move on. Well, I'm ready to get started. I've got plenty of dishes in mind I could use ingredients for. Before your moms responded to that, they glanced at each other and smiled. Yes, that's a very good idea, Cliff. This place is much larger than it seems. It's difficult to visit each part in a single day. I'm sure you can make a decent dent together, at least. Actually, since there's so many of us this time, we could take different sides of the market. Good. Divide and conquer, eh? That sounds brilliant. Everyone watched your mom's surprised. No one, had, no one had considered that an option. But your mom flashed the group a dazzling smile, continuing with the thought. Though it's a little unfair that there are four Rose family members and only two Holdens here. So I'll go with you boys to even out the odds. Okay. That's fine with me. Cliff scratched the back of his neck awkwardly. He wasn't sure where to look or what to say. That was not a problem his son had. I don't like that idea. Don't worry, we'll be apart only a few hours, and then we'll have something to talk about at the end of it. After the additional nudging, Cove nodded with a sigh. He realized this wasn't an argument he was going to win. All right. Hmm, alright. I do get the point, but I also don't mind spending time... But I also don't mind spending the first part of the trip with Risa and Ma. Ma clapped her hands together at that. Wonderful. Are the teams ready to go? <laughs> you stayed silent. <laughs> Noticing that you were quiet, Ma hooked an arm around you in a little side hug. You smiled softly. Thank you, Thank you Risa. Taking the lead, Ma wa Mom walked over towards Cove and Cliff, who were still eyeing her confusedly. Let's go. Come on, boys. We're heading out. Sure. Okay. Cove looked at you, Ma and Liz, and smiled slightly. He waved. I guess. See you later, I guess. Bye. See you later. See you in a few hours. Take care of yourselves. At that, Mom picked a direction and set out into the market with Mr. Holden and Cove following behind her. Grinning, Ma sent, sent them off with a big wave. Liz gave a daintier goodbye wave herself. Uh, despite the change in plans, you were still glad to be there. You felt like the change in plans was a good idea. You felt unsure about it. You had been happy, now you were annoyed. That definitely put a damper on your good mood. You felt unsure. You thought you thought you would go shopping altogether. You didn't like having your plans suddenly changed. This wasn't the note you wanted to start this errand on. Sighing, you hoped there wouldn't be any more unnecessary surprises today. Liz noticed that you were already deflated and deflating and took up the spot next to you. She elbowed you in a gesture that could only be encouraging when coming from an older sibling. Do you think there'll be any nice ginger around here? We'll have to find out. You nodded plainly, not having much to add right now. Ma led you both into the busy market. Some time passed, and your group had spent it browsing for the most part. There were only a few stalls you stopped at, but otherwise you were dragging your feet, trailing along behind Ma and Liz. At one point, Ma stopped suddenly. She put a hand on her belly and gave a half-hearted smile. I think I should have used the bathroom before we left home like the two of you responsibly did. Just need to pee? Yes. Yes, Liz. I'll have to visit the ladies' room now. Uh, sh should we wait here? Ma craned forward as she struggled to pinpoint the direction she needed to go. She gently brushed her comment away. There's no need to worry about me for this or waste time standing around. Keep on shopping. 
Though, actually, I might need help finding my way. Can you please come, Lizzie? You and your sister had to share a look over that. Why do that, of all things? Ma, if anyone should go anywhere on their own, shouldn't it be you? You're the one needing a detour, and you're the parent here. Ma giggled, unfazed by the resistance. Liz, meanwhile, tipped her brow, the brow of her hat up, watching Ma skeptically. Soon enough, Reese will have to handle doing these kinds of errands on her own. This makes good practice. What? Ma hooked an arm around Liz's and pulled her along. Have fun, we'll find each other again. Excuse me? You stood there stunned. You watched, dumbfounded, as they waded into the crowd. They were out of sight within moments, and what started as a group outing rapidly became you entirely on your own. You were overwhelmed. You thought, screw them! You were done with this whole trip. You felt great being left on your own. You thought Ma was being ridiculous, but you didn't really mind. You didn't know what to think. You were overwhelmed. You weren't prepared at all to be flung out here on your own. Uh, you found a place to sit where you were left. Ma had thrown you through a loop this time, and you felt lost. You were grateful for the nearby bench. Taking a few deep breaths, you took time to collect your thoughts. Absent-mindedly, you scanned the booths when, with an eye shot. One hooked your attention. Ooh. Ooh, candies. While most stalls were selling various garden-grown foods, this one had an array of homemade fudge. <gasps> fudge! There were even vegan versions of every option. Mmm. <gasps> mmm. 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 Fudge. But soon your gaze drifted elsewhere. It was fun getting a peek at all the fudge options, but you weren't enticed enough to buy any. You pondered for a moment what you should do now. None of the stalls were catching your eye. What did grab your attention, however, was a head of familiar seafoam hair sticking out above the crowd. You knew instantly it was Cove. He hadn't noticed you yet, but he was walking in your direction. He held a couple of bags tightly in his hand. Strangely, you couldn't spot your mom or his dad anywhere. You let him go. Cove appeared to be doing fine. You shuffled closer to the stall closest to you, hoping the bustling activity concealed you. Quietly watched him pass by. When Cove was out of sight, you breathed a sigh of relief. You could continue without dealing with anything else, and now you knew which direction not to go in. Not wanting to linger in that area for long lest you be caught, you walked off down the opposite path. The next stop you decided to make was at one of the larger stalls in the area. It was filled with several kinds of staple fruits and vegetables. Once a few people finished paying and moved, you got yourself directly in front of the shop. There were so many things to pick from. Ooh. Ooh. Potatoes? Ooh. Peaches. Mmm. Gapples. Strawberries. You gotta eat your spinach and potatoes. Um, hmm. 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 Uh, sure. The shop owner put your selection together and handed it to you in a couple bags. Satisfied with your decision, you continued on from there. After ambling along past many similar selections, you spotted something new. Homemade jams and local honey. The stall was glittering with a quaint glass jar stacked high, each encasing gels of various colors. When you got closer, you were surprised there were even more varieties than you thought. There were even different honeys based on what type of pollen the bees used. You considered the wares on display. Hmm. Hmm. Blueberry jam and plum jam. That sounds good. You paid, and the shop owner started putting together your order. They carefully packed it in a single bag with paper. Thank you very much. And that was another stall viewed. Your gaze went up to the sky as you started down the path once more. It had become clear to you that this was what the entire trip was going to be like. You were feeling better than you were earlier. You were feeling you were just feeling down about how the trip turned out. Your mom's plan seriously graded on you at this point. You were just feeling sad. Uh, it was going to take a while before you moved on from being purposefully left in the middle of the market. It really sucked. With slow, heavy steps, you continued on through the market. Ma and Mom both had both texted you during the trip, though only to say that they hoped you'd found some good stuff, and that they'd see you later. There were no answers on where they went or why. But you continued to wind your way through the bustling market until... Risa! 
You heard your name and instinctively turned before you'd even registered who's, who the voice's owner was. By that point, you'd made contact with Cove, who was heading your way. There was no going back. You waved at him. Hey, oh, are you by yourself too? That cinched it. You hadn't just missed seeing his dad or mom before. They hadn't been there. You nodded and began to explain what you experienced. He retold a similar tale of being ditched early on. Okay, wait, let me check my phone. Maybe someone tried getting in touch about whatever this is. Cove rearranged all the bags he was carrying, freeing a hand so that he could pull out his phone. He watched his eyes dart over the screen as he read the waiting messages. Not important, I can reply to that later. He mumbled his verdict under his breath. He wondered if utter uttering it aloud helped him remember, or whether these messages would slip his mind like checking his phone had done. Then Cove's face scrunched up with confusion. Wait, I've got a message for my dad. Listen to this. Cove, I wasn't part of the plan. I didn't know what was going on when I left with Reese's mom. Where are you? Didn't know what was going on? He sent that ages ago. I didn't hear it come in. He sent another one since then. He says he hopes I'm alright and that he's not bothering me. The newest one says everybody's going to the parking lot soon and we can meet up there. He lowered his phone, eyes narrowed. The same conclusion that was settling on you had landed on Cove as well. So it was on purpose. The crowd of people passing by stayed as noisy as ever, a sharp contrast to the silence that had fallen over you and Cove. He was rubbing the screen of his phone against his shirt, wiping away dust and debris. He continued scrubbing the screen long after anything could have remained, the action of a poor substitute for pushing away the awkwardness of the moment. You felt alright about it all, this whole mess was upsetting you, you were furious, you didn't care about what your moms had done. You were struggling to comprehend this. The shock was too fresh for you to even know how you felt. You are struggling. Some of your parents' actions made more sense with this context, but the bigger question of that of why was still weighing down on you. Okay then, fine, how are they going to explain this? I can't believe them. You sniffed, trying to hold back tears. You groaned, the sound expressing your misery in words you, that couldn't. Cove's frown grew taut, his mouth a stiff, serious line, but his eyes wide with concern. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about your mom's leaving you alone out here like this without warning. His speech was slower than usual. You suspected that he was choosing each word carefully. It was unnatural, but you appreciated that he didn't want to risk upsetting you further. I don't know if you want to talk to them about this, but I can definitely back you up. I totally get that it's sucky. You vented about the debacle. You wanted to let it go. You said nothing at all. You stayed silent. Cove waited, allowing you ample opportunity to speak up, in case you were hunting for words before piping up himself. I don't mind listening. His voice was soft and reassuring. He smiled, a gesture of gentle encouragement. You didn't need to dwell on it. It's alright. I'd rather not think about that. You then drew a deep breath, the fresh air steadying you. You didn't stop until your lungs were full. Cove watched over you, still concerned. Cove closed his eyes and took a deep breath. His brows creased, then furrowed deeper into a scowl, his arms tightly coiling together. So they did something stupid. I knew it. His voice had taken on an exaggerated quality, but what truly distinguished it from Cove's typical speaking voice was the abundance of rage. This is such a chore. Parents are so dumb. Why do people have to go places with family members anyway? I hate them. You got it instantly. It had been years since the boy with the bowl cut had been in town for the summer, but Cove had never forgotten. To this day, it continued to unleash his impersonation whenever the moment felt right. Sometimes you wondered if the act had grown more exaggerated over the years, or if the kid really was always that ridiculous. You burst out laughing. You shook your head at Cove's silliness. You played along. Smiled quietly. That kid is never going to live that down, huh? He smiled quietly. It was nice of him to try to cheer you up. Cove gave you a lopsided smile, letting the joke rest for now. Come on, we should probably go meet up with the group. You nodded hesitantly, your stomach tightening at the thought of what they might say when, they, when you finally saw them again. You didn't dally any longer, slipping back into the crowd. Fuck. Whoops. Whoops. Come on. Give me the log. You didn't dally any longer, slipping back into the crowd and making your way towards the entrance of the farmer's market. It didn't take long to reach the parking lot. Your parents, Mr. Holden and Liz, were already waiting there, and they waved at you both as you approached. Your own family seemed to be in pretty good mood, contrast to, in contrast to Mr. Holden. You stared at Cove with open concern as you got closer. Hey bud, hey Risa, how are you doing? They spotted the grave expressions hanging on your faces. It was no longer just Mr. Holden looking anxious. Worried looks were being traded around the whole group. Are you okay? Are you alright, sweetie? It really hurt to be left like that. I wanted to shop with you. Why did you do that? You looked at Cove, imploring him to be your voice. You stared at the ground, not wanting to do anything. 
We'd be, be we'd be doing better if we hadn't been abandoned in a farmer's market by our families. You saw your mom's frowning at his response. Ma glanced from Cove to Mom with blinking eyes. Just because Risa is shy and tries not to complain doesn't mean you can just leave them out of your plans and expect them to go with it every time. Aww. He's standing up for me. Aww. I feel things suddenly. <laughs> Ma hung her hand Ma hung her head, ashamed, and Mom had a hand pressed to her cheek. You could tell that they were quickly regretting their scheme. I'm so sorry, Risa. Her words were full of emotion. Mom squeezed Ma's arm. We were trying to make the errand more of a trip, less of a chore. Ma nodded. We didn't think you, Cove, and Liz wanted to be stuck trudging around a market with your parents all day. Especially not in the summer. But you're always very thoughtful and don't like to leave your moms behind, so we did so we did ourselves. It was only going to be for the market, not the other stops, I promise. Still, you're right. We could have just told you and let you make your own call. I really am sorry. Neither of us meant to upset you. I'm really sorry. All gas, no brakes. And we should have known better. Sorry. Ma ditched me, too, after pulling her urgent potty break stunt, if that helps. I went off to do my own shopping, as it seems they planned. Sorry. Sorry I didn't check back in with you. I wasn't thinking and just tried to blow it off. You quietly took in their stories of what happened. Over to the side, Cove was talking to his dad. Thanks for telling me what was up. Something was up, though I feel bad for missing the warning when you sent it. It's no trouble, sport. I learned my lesson about making surprise plans. Cove smiled at his dad. Mr. Holden, laughing, clapped Cove on the back. Wow, we're really being outplayed today. You realized you hadn't been the only onlookers to the Holden's moment. Your moms were engaging rueful looks. Liz had her arms crossed over her chest patiently waiting, watching it all unfold. Yes, it looks like it. We'd better find some way to catch up. Maybe we can do Risa's chores for the next week. Mom jabbed Ma on her shoulder. You might be onto something. Risa, how do you like the sound of that? They looked at you, hopefully. Sounds good to me. Make it two weeks. You're gonna have to do more than that. I'll think about it. You don't have to do anything. I'll think about it. Good, we're serious. Come on. And at the very least, we can make sure everyone stays together for the rest of the stops we're making today. You all nodded at the suggestion. We won't let you down. We'll be the best sheepdogs ever, guarding the flock and catching any strays. <laughs> we could at least be shepherds. You chuckled, your mood lifting in spite of the bumpy morning. It was going to be alright. You turned to the entrance for the farmer's market for one final glance, pressing it into your memory under this new light. You thought on what you'd picked up at the market and how you were going to enjoy it later. Some things you could only get from local suppliers like this. That was another perk about coming along to the market today. Liz clapped her hands together with the air of a teacher calling for attention. Since the other adults aren't acting like grown-ups, the rest of us are going to have to pick up the slack. It's time to get back on schedule and continue with the rest of the errands. Playtime is officially over. Ma laughed while Mr. Holden grinned awkwardly. Mom hung her head in an exaggerated display of mock defeat. Kids are tough, and I can't, and I can't even call them kids anymore. Liz tut-tutted with amusement at her mother. Cove shrugged, s staying a neutral observer, but the small smile on his face revealed that he was enjoying the conclusion. You nodded, relieved that everyone was getting along. With that, your trip to the farmer's market was closed. It was time to move on. There were too many of you for one car, so you and Cove had wound up in Mr. Holden's car on the way over. You figured it made sense to do the same for the next leg of the journey. You took the front seat again. After buckling in, Cove leaned back in his seat, letting himself be cushioned by the headrest once he'd shifted a little. He appeared to have found the, perf have found the perfect angle for maximum comfort. He gazed out of the window, looking suitably content with the world. You followed suit, hunkering down in your seat and looking out of the window as the car pulled away from the lot. You spent the rest of the day completing the remaining errands altogether as a group. You had enjoyed your brief independence. You were glad that you'd closed the day with everyone. Ma had been true to her word and, sh and ensured that you spent the rest of the time with the Rose family and the Holden family in one place. It had been a wonderful time, a lovely high note to end on. Hmm.